John Cena's Dr. Thugonomics persona with his baggy shorts, sports jersey, and oversized chain resonated with fans who were immersed in the hip hop culture. The early 2000s were a period when hip hop culture was booming in the mainstream media. Several hip hop artists dominated the scene and significantly influenced the genre. Jay Z, Eminem, Messi Elliott, Nelly, Ludacris, 50 Cent, Outkast. The rap scene was stacked. Cena's freestyling ability showcased his quick thinking and creativity. Each rap promo was different, filled with new insults, jokes, and catchphrases. This kept his character fresh and unpredictable, making fans eager to see what he can come up with next. John Cena made his WWE debut in 2002. He had a great debut against Kurt Angle, but his prototype character was lacking personality. The most important thing you need to become a star in this business. John Cena was almost fired by WWE until Stephanie McMahon discovered him rapping on the bus. So he debuted the Doctor of Thugonomics character on a Halloween edition of SmackDown. Cena showed up at a Halloween party freestyling. Buddy in a white mask was low-key hanging on his bars. This version of Cena wasn't Super Cena yet. He lost his first match against Rikishi. Rikishi was about to smuggle Cena with his cheeks. A guy named B-Square comes out and starts attacking him. He gave Rikishi a whole Hogan leg drop. Cena was hyping him up. This started a mini feud between Cena and Rikishi. They had a rap battle on SmackDown that was hosted by Taz. Cena came down to the ring rocking an oversized t-shirt, shorts, and a bucket hat. Rikishi made his way to the ring. Taz joking on Cena saying he should rap first because he dressed funnier than Rikishi. Cena rapped about his body, said Taz was a failure from Red Hook, and asked Rikishi how it feel to get the verbal stink face. Rikishi went next saying Cena's worse than Vanilla Ice and a fake ass Eminem. The rap battle was over once Rikishi said that because Cena and B-Square started jumping him. Taz had to get involved to stop them. Eddie and Chavo were walking backstage with their tag team titles and they bump into Cena and B-Square. Eddie's like, hey, it's the guy that thinks he's a rapper. Eddie gets to speaking in Spanish. I'm guessing Chavo translated because he called Cena and B-Square clowns. Then Cena started spazzing talking about, you messing with the god, Biggie told me what beef is. Eddie and Chavo tell him to chill out because they don't want to make this an East Coast and West Coast thing. Eddie tells Cena to tell the people back in Boston, Cena's hometown, that the Los Guerreros are still the champions. Him and Chavo leaves. Cena and B-Square got a shot at Eddie and Chavo tag titles. B-Square gets pinned, so Cena blames him for the loss and ends up replacing him with a guy named Red Dog. Red Dog was with Cena for like a week and then got sent over to Raw. From this point on, Cena was solo. Cena would go out to the ring and diss anyone. He called out Brock Lesnar. Brock was having an insane rookie year. He was already a 99 overall. Him and Cena debuted the same year. Brock had already beat Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and The Undertaker, but that didn't phase Cena. He dissed Brock before their match saying, the tattoo on Brock's back is his mother, and God built him strong and forgot to give him a brain. Brock doesn't do any talking, gets to throwing Cena around. Cena gets f out against the ring post and that left him in a wheelchair after his loss against Brock. Cena had to do segments from his crib while he recovered. He said Brock made a mistake leaving him breathing and that he's declaring war now. Cena did Brock through his raps. I'll whack you more times than a masturbation tournament. There was some crazy foreshadowing in these segments. Cena called himself the real Superman and the next big thing. His return back to SmackDown. He debuted Word Life and the FU when he faced Rikishi. After the match, he calls out Brock to run the fade. Cena proceeds to go to the back looking for Brock. He sees Brock. Brock sees him. They get to tussling. And Kurt Angle gets to creeping up on them with a 2x4. Him and Brock were scheduled to fight WrestleMania 19. John Cena didn't have an opponent, but that ain't stopping him from showing up. He just came out rapping to a cardboard cutout of Jay-Z and Fabulous. After WrestleMania, he did get a push. A tournament was held to determine who would challenge Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at Backlash. Cena won his match against Taker in the semifinals and he beat in the finals. Cena lost his championship match against Brock. There was nothing he could do with even with him trying to cheat. Brock was too OP. Cena said he got robbed at Backlash. He's saying everybody's seen Brock tap into his headlock and that he beat him like how the Mets beat the Red Sox. He gets interrupted by Spanky. Cena telling the people in the back to cut his music off. Asking Spanky what is he doing out here on his turf. Spanky wanted to spit a verse for him. The ref started beatboxing for Spanky on the mic. Spanky just started dissing Cena and got the crowd to chant Cena sucks. Cena closed on him, took him out his fit, and hits a FU. Smackdown was in Madison Square Garden one time. Cena came out and started calling himself a Smackdown veteran, even though he's only been there for like a year. He wanted to give opportunity to any rookie in the back to make a name for themselves like how he did against Kurt Angle. Orlando Jordan makes his SmackDown debut. Cena's like, this is the best we can do? A Billy Blanks look alike. I will rip through you like Larry Bird ripped the Knicks. The MSG crowd gets the booing. Cena got a cheap victory over Orlando Jordan. I guess he felt that wasn't enough because he started attacking him and giving him a FU. <laughs> the Undertaker comes out on his motorcycle. 
Soon as he gets in the ring, Cena dips out. The Undertaker and Orlando Jordan had a conversation backstage about what happened after the match. The Undertaker reason for coming out had to do with respect. He tells Orlando Jordan that he needs to make Cena respect him because if he don't, nobody in the back will. Cena overhears their conversation and walks up on them like, me and you had that conversation like that way back. Orlando, don't let this white boy brainwash you. He ends off telling the Undertaker to watch who business he stick his nose in. Then he did the you can't see me time and walked off. Cena low key pressed the Undertaker. The Undertaker calls Cena his match in the United States title tournament, now starting a feud between them. What Cena does after this shows you this was a different time period in wrestling. Bro pulls up to a graveyard and starts freestyling on the Undertaker. He not even trying to let niggas rest in peace. Cena was calling him a fraud, saying he ain't no dead man, he just a dead issue. Cena whipped out his <laughs> and starts pissing on a tombstone. The Ergonomic Cena was a savage. The match at Vengeance was good. Once the Undertaker gave Cena the last ride of hell, it was GG's. Cena did redeem himself getting a W over him on SmackDown. It wasn't clean, but that nigga don't care. Cena wanted to chase some gold after this. Eddie had became the United States champion at this point. Cena interrupts him and he's like, you got the US title, but you're not even a citizen. Cena making thirst about calling Border Patrol, all right, he's a snitch. They were in Eddie's hometown, so Cena gets to disrespecting the crowd. Eddie's trying to fight, but Cena not trying to until Eddie's put the US title on the line. Eddie gives him his match in his hometown in El Paso, Texas. Before the match, somebody done stole the tire off Eddie's whip. Eddie spazzing out, asking who did it. JBL and Ron Simmons don't know. Funaki doesn't know either. These two dudes in the back started laughing at Eddie. Eddie's like, oh, it's funny, then punches off on one of them. Wrestlers came to calm him Eddie down. The interviewer asked Cena, was it him? He's like, nah, it wasn't me. You know the crime rate's high in El Paso. Eddie lies, cheats, and steals. You don't think he got any ops? Later that night, they found out it was Cena who was the one who stole Eddie's tire when he came down to the ring with it. Eddie ain't wait for Viva La Raza to start playing and started attacking Cena. Their match ended in a DQ when Cena low blow Eddie. They went one on one again, but this time in a parking lot brawl. You had people in attendance with the cars lined up. This had me thinking of Dev Jam fight for New York. I see why Cena acts the ref if anything goes. Nigga pulls out a lawnmower, cranks it up, and tries to run Eddie over with it. Chavo got himself involved, which I don't blame him. His uncle got his head sent through a car window. Eddie got on top of a minivan to hit a fall splash on Cena to win the match. Cena and Kurt Angle cross paths again. On the final SmackDown before No Mercy, Kurt Angle came out playing as John Cena. He's doing the walk and everything. At shrink size, Kurt Angle comes out and puts him in the ankle lock. Cena came out mad as hell, telling Kurt what he's going to do to him at No Mercy. Little Kurt Angle low blows him, and then Kurt Angle suplexes him. Kurt was the one standing tall at the end. At No Mercy, Kurt won. Once he reversed the FU into the ankle lock, it was wraps. Cena started getting over around this time. His reaction was getting hotter. Cena turned babyface when he joined Team Angle for Survivor Series after Team Lesnar attacked him when he rejected their offer to join them. Team Angle got the win over Team Lesnar at Survivor Series. Cena entered the 2004 Royal Rumble earlier that year, making it to the final six before being eliminated by Big Show. The elimination led to a feud between them and Big Show for the United States title at WrestleMania 20. Cena defeated the Big Show at WrestleMania to capture his first singles championship. His US title reign lasted four months. Cena was stripped of the title for accidentally knocking over SmackDown's general manager, Kurt Angle. He won the title back by defeating Booker T in a best of five series that ended at no mercy, only to lose it to a debuting Carlito the next week. The feud started between him and Carlito when Cena got k stabbed in a nightclub by Carlito's bodyguard, Jesus. Immediately on Cena's return, he won the US title back from Carlito and debuted a custom-made spinner title belt. Cena took part in the 2005 Royal Rumble, and this time making it to the final two. Him and Batista went over the top rope at the same time. The match was restarted with Batista eventually winning it. Cena defeated Kurt Angle to earn a shot at the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 21 against JBL. In the opening stages of the feud, Cena lost his US title to Orlando Jordan, who proceeded to blow up the spinner version of the US title with JBL to bring back the original. John Cena would debut his legendary theme song, My Time Is Now, during the middle of the feud. Cena and JBL met at WrestleMania. The title switched hands, giving Cena his first world title in WWE. He then had the iconic Spinner WWE Championship belt made. Cena's SmackDown run came to an end on June 6, 2005 episode of Monday Night Raw, when he was the first pick of the WWE Draft Lottery, selected by Raw General Manager Eric Bischoff. Moving forward, WWE would make Cena ditch the Dr. Thugonomics character and turn him into an all-American hero for the next 10 years as the face of WWE. If you watch Cena's run as the face of WWE, you would know him getting rid of the Thugonomics character was the start of him becoming a polarizing figure in WWE. Some wasn't a fan of this change. That's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Which version of Cena did y'all prefer or thought was better? Dr. Thugonomics John Cena or Super Cena? Let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe 
and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.